Hey guys, welcome back to Raise Create Cards. I'm Ray Henderson, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator coming to you out of Morristown, Tennessee. Hope everybody has been having a wonderful start to their summer. All the kids are home from school. You may be getting ready to tear your hair out by now, but I wanted to share um, a design with you that I recently made. This is where the inspiration for today's cards comes from. And these are not uh, the dies and stamp set that we're going to be using. So recently I was privileged to uh, participate in a Stamping Up online virtual event. It was four hours long. Yes, we did get a couple of 15 minute breaks, you know, um, it, it, and all of that, but we were privileged to hear some behind the scene details on how some of the DSP was made, how some of the stamp sets and things originate. It was wonderful. The lady who um, created the DSP the, uh, for the Earth and Texture Suite actually made pottery. And that's where the some of those patterns and designs come from in that DSP. And I just thought that was fascinating. So we used a stamp and die set that has not been released yet. And I honestly don't know when it's going to be released. It is not fair to you um, to introduce something that is going to be maybe a month, two months down the road. I honestly don't know. I'm guessing that it is going to be in our new mini catalog this year that will go live to you in September. And it will run from September through December, okay? So we're not going to get in to this because you can't get it. It may be a good while before you can. And so the cards... Um, this was the stepped up version, okay? This was the simple version. Now, originally, it didn't have this black border. So, once the card was made, try to pretend you're not seeing the black. The more I looked at it, the more I thought something is missing. So, because it was already on a card base, I simply cut it off cut the background down to four by five and a quarter. I put a black mat under it, four and an eighth by five and three eighths, and then put it on a brand new card base. And I thought, man, that really made that pop. And I'm going to be doing <laughs> the same thing with this one. Just hadn't got there yet. And uh, I thought, well, you know, do I show this to them in a video or not? Um, and I thought, yeah, and I'll show them how it originally was supposed to look and then my little take on it after the fact. That is one of the privileges and uh, exciting things, just one of many things that we get to do as demonstrators to participate in stamping up events, and they have quite a few of them that go all year long. Okay, let me show you my sample cards for today. And again, I thought I would show you without the black um, mat underneath it, okay? And then with the black mat underneath it. And we're going to make both of these cards together. And I'm going to show you how super, super easy it is to do, okay? All right, let me get... I took, I've got a scrap here of vellum that I pulled out of my pack. I took my dark granny apple green and I scribbled and I scribbled it on the top. Now, historically, we're always taught to go to the back side to do it. And if you want a softer look, you can do that. Honestly, I didn't think it overpowered the card to just scribble right on top, and we're going to die cut those leaves right on top. In the meantime, I want to show you 
just how beautifully the flowers stamp. And where did I get the flowers? We are using Irresistible Blooms. It's been available for some time now on the online exclusives. In the description below the video, I will have a direct link where you can get the bundle. Um, and we are using the dies. There were so many dies in this bundle. I had to dedicate a whole stamp uh, case just to them because, and I have ideas for how I want to fill in the other side here. Just haven't done it yet. But anyway, um, normally, you know, I like to try to combine them in with my stamp set. But that is the main bundle that we are going to focus on. Here I have the largest flower. And I just love this set. It, you know, just because it's been around a hot minute doesn't mean that uh, we need to keep it on the back burner. So I'm going to stamp one in blue. Do I just need one? Yeah, just need one in the blue. Isn't that beautiful? And then I took the smallest flower and stamped it in Berry Burst. So here is our color palette today. We have Azure Afternoon, Granny Apple Green, and Berry Burst. Truth be told, I hadn't really gotten into the Azure Afternoon just a whole lot yet. Um, and I was dying to. And a lot of you know me. You know I was just elated that they brought back Berry Burst. One of my all-time favorites. So we're going to stamp that. All right, let me get my ink pad closed up. I'm already wearing a little bit of ink and so are the stamp pads. But that's okay. And I've got some scrap paper here. It's really funny. <laughs> because when I pulled out previous print things, guess what this is? It was the one of the original flyers on the Irresistible Blooms. Okay. <laughs> oh, my heavens. I thought that was hilarious. Anyway, I'm stamping this off because it's just a good habit to get into before you clean your stamps. And then that way there, your stamping scrub, you're not gonna have to wash it out as often. Um, or your simple chamois, whatever it is you like to use. Okay, so now we have that, and we'll put those to the side. Um, and I did end up getting into another stamp set and die set, we'll get to that here in a minute. Now, when you are taking your Stampin' Blends and making a background like I did with the Granny Apple Green, it dries super fast. However, I don't know if I can get you to pick up, see where that looks real shiny? That's wet. So you are going to need either a heat tool or this is actually one time you can use a hair dryer. You can use a hair dryer if you want to. So sorry for the noise. I'm so sorry, but I wanted to show you everything that was involved in making this card so you can decide if making this card is right for you. So, depending on what area of the country you live in, you're either getting it really, really bad or it's not too, too bad. Now, I am on the eastern, northern part of Tennessee. And our backyards have been a bit hazy and smoky. Let me make, see if I got it dry. No, I didn't. I'm going to hold it as far away from the camera as I can. Make sure this gets dry so that we can die cut this. But the wildfires up in Canada. Oh, my heavens, guys. That, I mean, my heart breaks for all of them. Oh, I just can't imagine. And we are so blessed that we are not having to deal with any of that. Um, but yeah, can you imagine what they're dealing with up there? Or even 
American citizens up there even closer to Canada than what I am down here in Tennessee. I mean, it is just, it is horrific, guys. All right, let's see if that got it. I think it did. I'm not seeing any shiny spots. Okay. Okay, maybe a little bit right there. Yeah, am I going to be able to die cut it? Well, I know what I can do. I'm going to flip it over, and I'm just going to give it a little back rub onto my scratch paper here. Oh, my goodness. There we go. Not very much came off, and I think we're going to be okay to die cut. I want to take my snips and... Just kind of get these going here because I want to use my mini machine and I can use my mini machine if I don't have too wide a layer. But I'm loving my mini machine for die cutting. I'll go ahead and cut that apart and cut these apart. Am I in camera? Yeah. Awesome. Cut that apart. It really didn't need to be there. I'll cut this little piece off. There we go. The scraps out of the way. And let's get ready and get some of this prepped. The die cutting. And do I have my dies out? No, of course not. Guys, I'm busy getting ready for the fourth. Uh, and a lot of you may be in the same boat. We're probably going to have, I mean, not huge but probably about 20 people out here next Tuesday. And so there's, you know, the necessary scrubbing down the back porch, scrubbing down the furniture, the furniture in the, under the gazebo, which, you know, dust, wind, rain, all that kind of thing really does take a toll. So let me bring this up here where you can really see it. And let's get my dies. I need the big one and the little one. And there is going to be a lot of flexibility with this stamp and die set. And I say there's going to be a lot of flexibility um, because when it comes to the leaves, oh my heavens. You have so very many options, and the way I do mine may not be the way you want to do yours. And I need another little piece of post-it tape for the other one. Because the vellum is kind of slick, um, it's always a good idea to use your washi tape, post-it note, whatever kind of tape you want to use and why am i not getting there we go almost this one here i've noticed i have to hold my mouth right because <laughs> for some reason i don't always get that right where i need it to be so all right we got that on there and you'll notice i'm using my light gray embossing uh plate that comes with the mini as my base plate and then my two clear plates. Let's see how easy that went through. It did. And die cuts really well. We're going to be changing this up here in a minute because there is an embossing folder that we are going to use. And now we only have one more to die cut. Normally, guys, y'all know that I like to kind of prep all this, but I think sometimes it's important for you to see really just what's involved. You know, it's so easy sometimes to kind of gloss it over and go, oh yeah, you just do this and just do that and, and everything is hunky-dory. Yes, but sometimes I know when I'm planning a project, all the steps that are involved are really important to me. Um, 
because if I am crunched for time, and many times most of us are, if I'm real crunched for time, I may not want to stamp on vellum and have to dry it, yada, yada, okay? And y'all are the same way, and I'm just being honest about it. I'm not trying to make out like this is the best thing since sliced bread. Now, you can modify this. You absolutely could totally omit the vellum. I love vellum. Um, I was intimidated by vellum when I first started. Um, and then it very quickly became my friend. And guys, when you're by yourself in your craft room, um, you know, definitely um, do whatever is comfortable for you. But don't be afraid to experiment. Now, I'm going to take... There are, let me just go ahead and bring these dies in. So you have one, two, three of these that will do cutouts. You have a solid three leaf and you have a double leaf. Well, I was using, I was stamping, if, let me bring this card back in. So I did stamp with the granny apple green on white card stock. And then I just took that die cut and die cut it out of Granny Apple Green. However, when I did this card, I did two of the leaves with the cutouts. And I thought, you know, I kind of think I like that better. So, to each his own, do your leaves however you want to do your leaves. But we are going to take and run this through and get four leaves out of here and this is where I need to change my sandwich and I do need to go back to the original number one white plate and I do need to no not yet not until we get ready to emboss I'm still using this one and I've used the dark gray one as my base for die cutting and it's been good it has been good all right, let me get that on there. Boy, I almost need to cut a little bit more of that off, didn't I? All right. I can line this up and it goes through so easy. So, so easy. And I'll do this as quick as I can because we're doing two cards. I will need four of these leaves, two per card. And I'm just going to very quickly knock out these middle pieces and take this whole leaf out if i can get a hold of it can i get a hold of it all right so we're supposed to have some rain later today uh and i am not going to complain because guys a lot of times we have a real rainy spring and then our summers are just bone dry. It's like miserable. I'm not complaining. Mm-mm. Not a bit. Not a bit. All right. Here's comes the second one. That's really begging me. I'm going to trim that off. Um, down here and right there. There we go. All right, get all the bits and pieces kind of out of the way. Run this through. I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit, or you can fast forward. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Some people really want to see all the details, and some of you not so much. So, YouTube lets us fast forward or speed up the video. <laughs> Oh, uh, that is so funny to hear the little chipmunk sound of a voice when you speed it up. Now that fell out. Now where'd it go? Oh, my heavens. Where'd it go? I, oh, it didn't fall out. <laughs> I thought it had fell out. And I thought, how funny, because the first one did not. So there we go. There's that one. Let's go again. Let me get that taped on there. And we're almost there, guys. 
almost. At least with the die cutting, we're almost there. All right. Yeah, I'm trying to hurry. I'm really crunched for time. Um, I, every year, and usually it's happened long before now, I like to take apart my storm windows and clean them. It hasn't been done yet. And I really wanna make sure that is done before next Tuesday. And so I just feel a little bit on the stress side. It's not a bad stress. I mean, I'm, I'm not upset or anything like that. Not that kind of stress. I am just anxious to know that I have all my little ducks in a row. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. All right, there's three and one more and we're done with the leaves. Make sure I'm staying in the green. And you may have noticed, you know, the little swishy marks, but when you die cut, you don't see it. You don't. So I'm thinking last night was probably one of the best meals I have had in a very, very long time. Now I always do try to enjoy my food and I'm always grateful um, for that blessing. So I had noticed yesterday when I watered that I had two squash that were really crying out to be um, harvested. I thought, all right, I can oblige. And these are the yellow crookneck squash that is such a favorite of the South and other places. So um, I went out there, cut them loose. My tomatoes aren't ready yet because I really, really, when I got done with the squash, I really, really wanted to have some sliced tomato on the side. Yeah, well, I have lots of maters. I have lots of cherry maters and beef steaks coming on. They're just not ready to eat yet and uh, didn't wasn't really in the mood for fried green tomatoes. So I took those two squash, washed them, sliced them, and uh, Oh, yes, here, now, back to this. I'm going back with the number one original base plate, and we are going to bring in the uh, Stripes and Splatters 3D embossing folders. These are made specifically to be usable with the mini, whether you have the white or the boho blue, doesn't matter. And so we're gonna use the splatters, and we have cardstock here that is cut three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And each card is gonna have this on the front. I'm gonna raise this up and lay this in here. There we go. I'm gonna get ready to run that through. And because it is a 3D embossing folder, you do want the dark gray plate on top. It's a little thicker than the light gray plate. I've used a dark gray plate also for my base plate, and that works fine too for die cutting. Okay, so we have this piece prepared, and we got one more. Isn't that pretty? I don't know, can you see that? That's awesome. Got one more. We'll run that through very quickly, and then Mini Me can go back out of the way and we'll get ready to assemble the card cards but anyway i did i cut it up i diced up some onion and the day before i had four little green beans oh my heavens i say little they were actually getting some length on them and sometimes we can leave stuff on there too long and things can start getting, you know, like past their prime. And you can really taste it when that happens. All right, I'm going to put Mr. Mini-Me out of the way. 
man, did I make a mess. Let's, <laughs> let's straighten back up here. Oh, my word. Am I straight now? Is it straight for you in the camera? Mm, yeah. I don't know about you guys. It makes me crazy if things are real wonky in the background. And uh, it, it, it's, it's like pretty soon that's all I'm noticing is how everything is really wonky. All right. Let's make sure, first of all, that I'm turning these right side up. We're going to add them to our little pile of die cuts here. And ever so quickly, I'm trying to get up the debris. But anyway, I had picked the four green beans earlier. I had to pick them for a reason. I'll, I'll explain more about that. Oh, there's my die. Get that back over there in my case. And I, oh, here it is. All right, back in there. Close that back up. Let's get all these little bits and pieces out of here. I just threw them on the floor. <laughs> I haven't vacuumed in here today. And that is something I've got to get done. But anyway, so when I got ready, when I was planting my little garden, I wanted bush beans. And I wanted bush beans. Um, the difference between bush beans and pole beans, well, there's the obvious difference, right? Of um, the bush beans don't climb, okay? You don't have to provide a trellis. The other um, thing about bush beans is that they usually produce all at one time, okay? It's not like the pole beans where they just keep producing as long as you're picking it, watering it, nourishing that plant. They will keep giving you green beans for some time. I didn't want that. Well, guess what? The bush beans are not bush beans. <laughs> they are Blue Lake green beans, but they're poles. Oh, yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I had to run out there and uh, uh, do a... Uh, a trellis, a makeshift trellis. It was sad looking, guys. It was. It was sad looking. But now, because they are pole beans, that means I need to be picking them as they come available. Well, I only had the four, and I had put them in the fridge. I was like, okay, um, we're going to um, just go ahead and... You know what I didn't do? I didn't cut a piece of black for this one, and I think I want to. Do I want to? I think I do because I showed you guys my sample of with and without, and I really think it needs that piece of black. So do I have one already cut? Sometimes I do because I use my black hard and heavy. As a matter of fact, it is time for me to order another pack of black. So, very quickly, I am going to cut four and an eighth by five and three eighths to go under it. I thought I might have already had to cut, but I didn't. Okay. And I noticed earlier today that my blade is starting to lose a little bit of its sharpness. I don't know. Come on, focus. Can you see that little tiny, tiny bit of feathering? Now, you can fix it before you lay it down, or if you don't notice it until you glue it down. There's Either way, you can fix that really easy. Just lightly take your fingernail over that, all in one direction. Try to make sure that is smoothed out. Then we're going to lay this on here. While my other glue is drying on my white layer, but that's okay. I'm going to put this down. And straight, straight, straight. I think so. And now we can put our white layer on there. Okay, is it straight? I think so. There we go. 
And now that embossed piece that we did, I'm not going to glue it down. We're going to do dimensionals on that. So I've got a brand new thing here of dimensionals. And you may notice I drew Sharpie lines. I have a blue Sharpie in my craft room. The day it runs out, I'll probably have to default back to a black. Don't know. When you run these lines on your dimensionals, and I don't always remember to do this, okay? Do as I say, not as I do. Um, it is super easy then when you get ready to take your backings off. You already know. How I many times, because I, I do it all the time, I'll be taking off my backings. And if I have multiple backings, I'm taking them off and then I'm going, well, did I get that one? And so we're touching it and yeah. So, if you have a line going down all of your dimensionals, you're good to go. You know which ones you've done and which ones you haven't done. And so, on this part here, we are just simply going to center it the best we can, top and bottom, side to side. Okay, there we go. Got that on there. And I used the deckled rectangle dies and the sentiment that I used came from Quiet Meadow. Now you could use the Quiet Meadow set um, in lieu of the one I'm using, but I really like the versatility um, that you have with your leaves to go with your flowers. And I just think that Irresistible Blooms is just, it's beautiful anyway. Okay, so here is where this came from. Heartfelt love and caring thoughts are with you. And we're going to take this and, again, we're going to use dimensionals and pop this. It's going to be over more to the right-hand side when we lay it down. But this is such an easy card to make. It truly is. And... I like this sentiment because it's not necessarily a sympathy card, although it could be. It is not necessarily a get well card, although it could be. And it is, an, it is not just necessarily a card of encouragement, although it could be. And I hope I got that on there straight. Okay, I did. Now, let's start with that Azure Afternoon, and you have an option. You can go with the darker side. You can go with a little bit lighter side. Doesn't matter. However you want to do yours, you do yours. Now, I am going to bring in my glue dots, and we are going to get a glue dot, and I just put it right in the very middle of the flower, and you'll see why here in a minute. And then you can just take and position it. I kind of want the middle of the flower to kind of be up on my sentiment a little bit. You don't have to do yours that way. I just thought it looked good. And then we're going to take two of these leaves and Another glue dot. Glue dots are going to be your best friend if you decide to replicate this design. We're just going to stick one right there. We're going to take this other one. And as long as they kind of join together there. And then I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to put another glue dot on it. Right down here. And I'm just going to take and just tuck that under to where there's a pleasing amount sticking out. And then we're gonna grab a small berry burst. Again, I wanna put a glue dot in the middle. And this one doesn't have to be on here. You actually could tuck it over here if you wanted to do that and just kinda tuck that down. Um, I don't know that I really want mine over that far, so I am gonna kind of let it hang right here on the edge of my sentiment layer. 
and we're going to do the exact same thing with these leaves. Okay. And I am desperately, while I'm doing this and trying to talk and be coherent and make sense and stay on track, I'm looking around for my other leaves that I know I have already cut. And I don't see them. And I'm wondering what I did with them. Oh, my heavens. Okay. So, once again, we're just going to take these two, kind of like so-so, turn it back over because we want another glue dot on the very bottom. And I just want to put those somewhere like so. And then we are going to take our black. These are the classic matte dots. They have not retired, thank goodness. I love these. Can you tell? I've used a bunch of my black and a bunch of the uh, the gray and a smattering of the white ones haven't used a very vanilla yet and i love very vanilla i am hankering to make a project with that very vanilla okay and what do you think guys that is the fancy one okay it's got a little bit more something something going on and it looks really sweet. You can kind of see a hint of the leaves up underneath, but it doesn't look bad. You can't see the glue dots anywhere. What do you think? I love it. All right. Normally, you know, we start out with the simple card and then move up. Uh, but you guys are smart enough. You've been at this long enough. You know the diff, right? Okay, let's go ahead and get ready to put the other card together. And I did have a black layer done on this one. And I had flipped my blade around in my cutter when I noticed how ragged it was getting. We're going to pretend I don't notice it. We're going to pretend that I'm going to put my black layer down on my white card base. Let me move that for the minute. And again, four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And as I'm putting it down, now my eyes are going to pick up on that. And it's like, oh, poop. I've already got glue everywhere. Now what am I going to do? You can take either your take your pick tool or like the end of your um, reverse tweezers and look just lightly lightly scrape right along that edge just along that edge and if you find it's not helping then go the other way and you can get all of that cleaned up and off of there and when you are done you're going to have little microscopic bits of black on your uh, surface below you will have to stop and clean that up but it is possible to get that cleaned up. And normally, when I'm working in my craft room, this works really well for me with my tweezers. But I'm going to come in and there. That really helped clean that up quite a bit. Still shows a little bit, but it's not bad. It's not a deal breaker. So, there's always something we can do to try to fix our little boo-boos, okay? Okay. Um, I don't see the feathering on my white cardstock, and I cut it with the same blade. But, honey, that black is going to show every time. All right, we're going to get this layer on here, and this is five by four and a quarter on top of that four and an eighth by five and three eighths. Okay, and where's that piece that we, there it is. Make sure I'm working on the right side. And, again, we're going to take more dimensionals. And pop this layer up. You don't have to. I mean, you can glue it down. There was a card that I did glue it down. Which one was it? I'll find it here in a minute and show it to you. And try to hold them side by side. See if you can tell any difference. Um, on whether it was 
glued down or popped up, but uh, it really does add just a tiny bit more dimension to the um, overall look of the card when your recipient gets it. Here we go. And what I would recommend, and I didn't do this, um, sometimes when we use those 3D embossing folders, it can make your cardstock layer almost like it's thinner than what it originally started out because it Im imprints so much of a design. Um, I would use the thick basic white for this layer here. If you don't even... You know, even if you don't use it for your card base, I would because it just feels a little bit lighter and a little bit thinner. And I mean, that's just being honest. Now I'm looking around for the card that didn't have it popped up. And I'm not, let's see, is it in this stack? Oh, heavens. I don't know what I've done with it. And it was right here when I started the video. Oh my goodness. All right, guys. <laughs> Onward and upward. So here is their sentiment layer. And again, I'm going to pop it up on dimensionals. Here we go. And release the backing off of them. Oh, guys, I've got an important announcement for you. And I was so elated when I heard this yesterday. You all know how much I adore Wendy Cranford. And I told you all that recently I did become an affiliate with her Creative Vault. Starting today. You're, I'm recording this video on Thursday. Um, on June the 30th. You're going to be seeing it on July 1st. From the 1st of July to the 4th of July. Are you ready for this? Wendy is running a special. You get your whole first month for $5. Wow. Wow. So, yes, the link will be below the video. You can click on that link and go over there and sign up for next to nothing to get a whole month's worth of all the content you care to delve into and learn from. Amazing. But yes, do support her. Now at this point, I can do one of the small berry burst. Oh guys, it won't be long before we can go live. Or I can do the blue. And because the sentiment is stamped in blue and there's only going to be one flower, I choose to go with the Berry Burst. If we were live, I would love to know, you know, overall, what those of you who are watching would go with. Would you go ahead and go with the Azure Afternoon? Or would you go with the Berry Burst? But I do want just a little bit of... And I'm putting the glue dot right in the middle of the back. And I'm going to lay this right up there. And I can't find the ones that I had. Oh, heavens. All right, guys. So, I've got... <laughs> I've had this thing for years and years. And it's an old, old shell. Okay? It's an old shell. But I will throw my rejects or things that I decide not to use in here. And so I do have, I do have these that I decided not to use. Dang it. Hmm. That's a big, big leaf, isn't it? And so is that one. Because originally, my idea was to kind of offset the two together, and eh, wasn't real wild about it. I don't want to use just a leaf. Hmm. How am I going to do this? I wonder. 
I am not a fussy cutter, guys, by any shape of the imagination, but I wonder if I could manage to cut part of this and do a vellum leaf with that. Oh, that just looks so big. Well, let's... All right. I may be mucking this totally up. Cut that off. Now we do have just two leaves. That looks awfully skinny once that got cut off by itself. So let's do this. Let me take this one and... If I can curve it right... There we go. Not too bad. And I'll find them after the video and I'll be going, are you kidding me? Let's do that. So I'm gonna take glue dot and put that right down here. And let me pick this back up. Amazing what we can do when, <laughs> what's that old saying, necessity is the mother of invention. Sometimes you just kind of have to figure out what you need to do to make it work. But I wanted the vellum in the leaves, just like what we did um, with creativity now, um, because you've got that vellum flower and you just needed a little more something, something. You know, you just did. All right, I got that on there. I'm gonna slide this under, eh, right about so. And one more black dot. Now, where did those go? I just had, oh, they're right here. <laughs> oh, y'all don't ever do that in your craft room, do ya? Oh, by the way, yes, I took those four little green beans and I you know, cut them up into bite-sized pieces, and I sauteed them with the squash and the onion. And it was amazing. I sauteed them in some avocado oil. Everything was good and tender. I sliced a uh, tomato on the side that I had in the fridge. And oh my heavens, this girl pigged out. I do love me my vegetables. All right, guys, let's bring both of these cards in and let me try to kind of camouflage some of this mess here. Let me move these. Let's get this straightened back up. And here's this one and this one that we just did together. And I like them. I think it's simple but elegant. Again, you don't have to use vellum, but again, did you see how easily we took the vellum and incorporated that into our card? And then these are the ones that we did with creativity now. And again, I'm going to cut this off and uh, put a, a black mat under it and re-glue the whole thing to another uh, basic white card base. But... I thought this was adorable. I thought it was beautiful. And again, that sentiment opens the door for a support card or anything that you need that to say, okay? Guys, I didn't mean for this video to run so long. Uh, I am so sorry that I was just a little bit distracted. I try so hard not to do that and not to be like an ADHD type person. Um, most especially on video because you're giving up your valuable time to come and be with me. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for all your support, your likes, those of you who uh, do subscribe, those of you who comment. I guess comments are probably about my favorite thing because you choose to engage with me and uh, that that's something I treasure very highly. Okay, guys, until next time, be safe, be blessed, know you are loved. God is good all the time.
Bye.